Hello and welcome to Masterpiece Theater. Just kidding, but I really like this Apple Keynote presentation template. So we're gonna go with it for this presentation. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Google Calendar and Microsoft OneNote to keep all your travel, business, and personal tasks organized, including writing, recording, editing, and posting your blog posts and videos, posting pictures and comments on social media, website creation and management, researching and planning travel, learning new skills, finance and budgeting, starting and maintaining a business, reading books on business and travel topics, taking online courses, physical fitness and eating right, keeping in touch with friends, and whatever else needs to be tracked. I've already seen many posts on Reddit and Facebook digital nomad groups asking about the best tools for keeping organized, and I've posted questions myself when I'm looking for a specific type of tool. So I thought it would be worthwhile to show you how I keep everything in order and stay productive. The great thing about these two tools is that they're both free, they work on iPhone, Android, iOS, and Windows, and they meet many of the requirements that most people have, such as task management and categorization, pop-up phone reminders, calendar scheduling, sharing and collaboration, workload visualization, note-taking, and idea capturing. The features of different apps you can install onto your phone and computer vary greatly, and finding the right one can be overwhelming. I find that having too many tools just results in more stress and less actual work getting completed, so I've kept it simple. Let's take a look at each of these tools and how I use them to stay organized. To keep everything straight, I've set up multiple Google calendars, all color-coded to match my Microsoft OneNote notebooks. As you can see, my personal items, like fitness and practicing piano, are in purple. Business is in pink, social media in yellow, travel in blue, website work in turquoise, and YouTube in red. Of course, I look incredibly disciplined, but I rarely complete any of these items exactly at their specified times. However, I do rearrange them as things change, and it's as simple as dragging and dropping. And I can still visualize if it's possible to get everything done I want to in a given week. To set up all these calendars, I click on the drop down next to My Calendars and click Create New Calendar. For example, if I wanted to create a new calendar of books to read, simply type in the calendar name, I can add a description, and I can also make it public if I wanted to be able to share it with everyone, or I can share it with specific people, which I'll talk more about later. I click Create Calendar, and now I have my books to read. The calendars are in alphabetical order, but I can also color code them if I wanted to give this a different color, simply by clicking on the drop down and selecting a different color or choosing a custom one. Now that I have a new calendar, I can add something to it simply by going to the calendar, selecting a time, and then selecting which calendar I want to add it to. So now I know that from 12 to 1, I want to go ahead and read my new travel book. To ensure that all my calendars are synced with my phone, I'll open a new tab and go to calendar.google.com slash calendar slash sync select. This is where you can set which calendars you want to sync with your phone. Now it says iPhone, iPad, iCal here, but it also does work with Android. So if I did not want to see, for example, my books to read on my phone, I could uncheck it. Automatically when you add a new calendar, it will check it in this list. But if you do add other calendars or people share their calendars with you and you don't want them on your phone, you can uncheck them. And then make sure you scroll to the bottom and click save. Another thing I do with my calendar is add recurring items. For example, you can see my walk with mom is every day at 8.30, or that I work on my website two days a week from one to four. I can do this by simply selecting a time, selecting the calendar I want to put it under, then click Edit Event. Make sure you name the event, and then check the Repeat button and decide whether you want to do it weekly, monthly, daily, just on weekdays, for example, and for how long you want to do it. Click Done, click Save, and it will automatically propagate across the entire calendar. So you can see by going week to week here. Whenever I want to move one of the recurring items, I can simply click on the name and change the time here. When I click Save, it will ask me if I just want to change today's event, all the events that follow, or all, which include the past events. So I can click only this event, and it'll just move today's. If I simply drag one of the events, it will just go ahead and move it without asking me if I want to change the others. 
Now you can see when you hover that there's a line through this little calendar here, which means it's no longer part of the recurring event. Whereas this one doesn't have a line through it, so it's still part of the recurring event. I try to never completely fill up my week, since things always pop up that need attention. For example, if I look at last week, it used to look a lot like this week's calendar, but you can see it changed significantly, and now I can always look back to see what I worked on. I can share one or more of my calendars by clicking on the drop down next to the calendar and clicking share this calendar. We also saw this when we first created the calendar. I can enter the email address of anyone I want to share with and have options of whether or not I want to allow them to manage my calendar as well, which is great if you're going to have some sort of remote assistant. Let them just make changes to events or only be able to see when I'm free or busy, which you may want to do with customers or business partners. You can add as many emails as you want to share with, and they will be able to see your calendar within their own calendar. They can also share their calendars with me, and I'll be able to see them under the other calendars list. And then I can decide when I want to turn them on and off to be able to schedule meetings at the best time for everyone. Now let's switch over to Microsoft OneNote and see how I keep it all in sync. Here in OneNote, you can see the matching colors that I mentioned before. Business was in pink, social media in yellow, travel in blue, the website in turquoise, and YouTube in red. The rest of these don't actually need calendars to go with them, I just need places to keep all of my notes. Each notebook has sections relevant to the work I'm doing. For example, right now I'm under my YouTube blog. You can see all the episodes I've recorded with their names, and all of the lessons that I'm working on, as well as other potential ideas I have for videos. In this case, this is where I write all my scripts and keep notes for any future videos. Under travel, I'm tracking everything from places and people that I want to visit, to travel insurance research that I use for one of my videos and for my own purposes, to entry and exit requirements, which I'll need to know for when I'm going to different countries and regions, like the Schengen region. When it's time to sit down and work, everything is ready to go, and I don't have to spend time gathering my notes or figuring out where I save something. Both Google Calendar and OneNote sync with Android and iPhone. I wake up in the middle of the night occasionally with an idea, and I can open either of the apps to put in the details and go back to bed. I was originally using the Reminders app on my iPhone for tasks, but realized these were better tracked as calendar events, so I would always know when I actually had time to complete them. Sometimes, though, I do still throw small to-dos in the Reminders app. The old acronym KISS, or Keep It Simple Stupid, applies to using tools to stay organized. Make a list of your requirements. Do you need something visual like a Gantt chart or calendar? Do you need to collaborate with others? Do you need automated reminders? How do you like to keep your notes organized? Find the minimum number of tools with the most number of features. And remember, your needs may change, so do not become so set in your ways that you refuse to change tools when they no longer work for you. In the future, I'm sure I will need to add new tools to my own arsenal, especially for managing invoices, finances, and tracking expenses for my business. And when I do, I'll be sure to review what's out there and post my findings here. Thank you for joining me. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave a comment. Subscribe and stay tuned for more critical lessons for travelers and digital nomads.